Firm, episode 142. We're going to be talking to a photographer slash model and a guy that does embroidery, small business owner. Uh, join us today as me and Hoken get in touch with a couple artists, you know? <clears throat> Uh, I feel terrible about it, man. You know, they, just, they got people making jokes about it and, like, memes and shit, but, like, you know, people aren't really paying attention to it. Um, you know, if they start controlling that, it's mostly uh, on uh, on all of us, you know? Yeah, hey, uh, you should probably come over here, though. But that's my opinion, you know? Like, I just don't feel um, well about it. I don't feel good about, you know, the government taking over the Internet and... Uh, not letting us do what we usually do, you know? But how would you, f how would you say you feel about uh, people having to pay for... Well, that's certain, terrible. I mean, yeah. they already pay for the, the service itself, you know? Yeah, like, th that's, what, that's what I've been saying. Just first having to buy the phone in the first place, yeah. and then buying the Wi-Fi. And the service. Yeah, the service, and then having to pay for whatever you have to access, Netflix, what whatever it is. Like, but this, this is the part that I was tripping about, you know? Because, like, they get to... Um, control what we see pretty much yeah 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 but, like you, you know how about all the crisis going on like the fucking um a perfect example how so many people filmed um the vegas thing the oh shooting. yeah that's right that's right so many people got caught different angles right and at that and that's because people are more into their phones now nowadays you know think of it like 9 11 a lot of people didn't have um they weren't on their phones as they as yeah. much as they are now you know so people weren't catching it like oh shit you know is this happening at the moment that's what I'm saying, like, um, that's what they want to limit, you know? Um, the awareness of a, a global crisis and shit, you know? Yeah. That's what I mean, like. Yeah, sure. We'll be doing the intro in uh, quite a bit, but for now we're going to just talk about whatever social issues that have been happening. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Marco, Marco. Do you sing? Do you paint? Are you a photographer? Boy, Hulkin. Then hit us up on the Esquilax Tower. Live every Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Hey, so exclusively on dronebox.com. Damn! Welcome back, everyone. But yeah, back to net neutrality. It's just it's just been a a strange situation all over when it comes to uh, having to not have a choice in it. Yeah, because because eighty percent of the people agree that we we want net neutrality but yeah. i mean that's funny because yeah. like not, not a lot of people actually even knew about it yeah like it's i like, i didn't know about it i thought at first i thought net neutrality was a bad thing yeah. but then i realized oh it's the opposite and see like that's what i'm saying like we're we're, we're shifting from um you know being uh, i get i'm not like i said I don't, I don't really have a side in like the government shit yeah i know it's all bad but um you know we're supposed to be uh democratic and whatnot and it's turning kind of totalitarian you know yeah you heard about that that style of government where everybody has the same thing, but they, you know, government can watch over what you're doing and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, um, have you read this book called uh, 1984 by George Orwell? Yeah, yeah, that's a, like that's that. a great book. That's what it's turning into, man. That's what they want to do, you know. Big Brother. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Big Brother already exists, you know. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? But yeah, it's just because I don't see how how the FCC can possibly uh, want to control everything when they've already began they censorship yeah amount. they they control a good amount it reminds me of that episode i know it's you know a little irrelevant no it probably is but that episode of uh, family guy where the fcc takes over everything oh yeah and they can't do shit yeah it's like it's gonna be like that watch everybody's gonna be triggered over everything dude and they're gonna figure out like damn this is pretty bad you know i mean it is bad because it might make people right because we're lucky for shows like this because we can say what we want we can express what we want and that's that's basically the main purpose of a uh, of having having a show like this being able to express but when you get the FCC wanting to take away all those privileges it's like oh you want to express yourself 
That's ten dollars a you're prime. You're technically taking away people's voices. Yeah, you know? pretty much. Because like the majority of uh, what people do on the internet is, you know, they do activism work. Yeah. That's like, like, I think that's the best way to do it now, because you know, people don't really like talking and stuff, and they're not out that much. So like, they learn to like, oh, stay quiet and keep it to the yeah, people yeah. you want. You know, they have an audience, pretty much. Yeah, a couple of days ago, well, just yesterday actually, I saw a, a video on people who refuse to speak up, people who would say they speak up, but they don't really. And that's that's pretty much the issue here. We won't, a lot of us didn't text uh, the resistance of um, the FCC of being able to keep net neutrality. Yeah. And we can easily, we can easily get everybody to say, uh, Oh, you know, text the number, call them, email them, whatever. But I'm calling is the best one. A lot would say, but they're still hey, ignoring yeah. it, low key. Yeah. Like, um, I was actually talking to my dad about it. He's like, "Oh, they're gonna ignore it," you know. Like, even my dad knows, you know. Like, it, it's it's weird for me to to interact like with uh, older people that kind of they go with the government. <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck? Yo, we just flew right now. Time travel. Welcome everyone. We're in Washington D.C. We're in Washington D.C. today. We're talking about it Netflix. looks like it. Wait, that's uh, that's the White House, right? Wow, you took that picture. That's Not, beautiful. What is that? <laughs> I can't really see through the glasses. Low key. Low key. Low key. That looks like man. We're really there, man. I love this. We're out in the grass chilling. Hello, how you doing? Good afternoon. Oh, look at Joe. Oh. All right, cool. All right. So, you want you want to keep talking, you know? Or? But yeah, it's I don't know. It's it's just been a situation of uh just something pent up inside that doesn't want to speak. And yeah, like I don't how you were talking about earlier of communicating with older people. That's how I would feel about say if I talked about this situation to my mother, she'd probably she'd probably see it as something important, but when it comes to a situation of, do you want to pay five dollars to see a Facebook post? I don't, well, I don't you. think she'd want to do that, you know. I was seeing something about um somewhere I, I forgot where I saw, but they're like, oh, you get you have to, they charge you like a dollar for each search you make. Wow. What the fuck? That's crazy, man. Yeah, see, cause that's not that's not we don't want it to reach a level where we have to pay for every transaction. Like, say for example, oh, pay to search something like fifty cents, and then pay to see somebody's post, one dollar, uh, pay five dollars a month to be able to see everything, and then it's like, we're just gonna be in a constant rabbit hole where we'll, we're just spending money to spend money. Yeah, man, like, and that's what consumerism yeah. is. It, consumerism be, has become a virus in, you know, the lands of America, and we don't want to get, give it up because we feel, you know, like, obligated and, and yeah, exactly. happier, apparently, according to, you know, consumerism. So right now we're gonna introduce our first photographer, our first uh, guest, and go ahead. Her name is Emily Gummig. Huh? Emily Gummig. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Hi. What's up? Guys? What's up? Oh, I like her background. We're like. <laughs> far away. I know we are far away. So, hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about being late. We're fucking no, no, traffic. it's all good. Don't even trip. Um, so yeah, like you're finally here. I know. I made it. I'm here. What, what's your name again? Emily Gummig. All right. Yeah. yeah. Just so everybody gets your. I like the cool sunglasses. Those oh, are nice. Nice touch. Thanks. Yeah, I heard there was gonna be a model next year or something. Yeah, I have a model coming, but she again, LA traffic. She's running a little late. So, and I think she got pulled over by the cops too for like a, a tail light or something being out. But they let her go. She's good. She's coming. But it's all good. We're all running late today. <laughs> so, who is Emily Gummig? Oh fuck! <laughs> Such a loaded question. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of a creative weirdo wrapped inside this shell of a body. No. Um, uh, I'm a photographer. I do some modeling on the side. Um, and uh, I just like I'm obsessed with creating images and creating stories and uh, you know different things like that. So what kinds of stories would you say that you create? Um, so I'm kind of really into like 
I guess you'd call it like a branch of cosplay, but it's kind of like character play where I make my own character and like I make my own like world for the character. So like right now I'm really into like Antler Girl and I have oh, Galaxy yeah. Bunny Girl. And so like I'll have models dress up as these girls or like these makeup artists kind of turn them into these characters and then I kind of create my own like comic book almost oh, S sure. kind of thing or like an illustrator. I'd, I'd say it's kind of on the same board with like being an illustrator except I just do it with a camera and like, you know, Perhaps. <laughs> Would you say that you have like an initial idea before you do the cosplay and the costumes and the yeah. setting? Yeah, I think so. I always come up like I've always been kind of a weird kid and I always like uh, played with toys for way too long into my high school years and things yeah. like that. So I was always creating little stories and characters and I think I just get inspired by like sci-fi and fantasy and I kind of like warp that with reality and oh, I, I escape into like my own little fantasy world and create my own little characters and shit. So with doing cosplays would you would you put them in that environmental position as well? Um, I wouldn't even say it's a cosplay every time like okay. I'm just kind of throwing it under that umbrella I'd say it's more like character design. Oh okay. Um, I don't know I don't really know the technical term it would be but um, what was the question I forgot? <laughs> oh um Oh yeah, do you put them in that environment? Like, let's say you do an antler girl, would you put her in a forest? Yeah, or would so you? like I've been hired, yeah. um, I've been hired before like to photograph a musician and she really vibed out on the galaxy bunny chick. Oh, okay. So like we created her own version of the galaxy bunny. And um, yeah, like uh, we just, we had her go in the forest and kind of gave her a little plot line. And so she totally like, was vibing out with that character and wanted to be part of that world. So like, I totally made her part of that world. Oh, it was okay. really cool. Yeah, it was fun. Um, do you, what kinds of models do you shoot with? Females, males, uh, it doesn't so matter? Mostly you know? women typically, but like I'm totally open to shooting with men okay. and women. I'm really trying to market more towards like the alternative or tattooed community. Um, I just feel like, you know, and even like like skateboarders or surfers or you know, people that are kind of like on the fringes or people like that, like I kind of vibe out with, musicians I vibe out with. So it could be kind of anyone, anyone that's kind of creative. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to photograph a lot more alternative and tattooed girls right now. I'm like kind of obsessed with that community myself. So I think that's the kind of clients I'm going for now. That's pretty awesome, you know, like it reminds me of uh, Suicide Girls. Yeah, Suicide Girls are tight. I don't do any like full on like nudity, but yeah. I respect the art and Suicide Girls, they have a lot of good models, so. H how did you start off, uh, you know, photography pretty much? So in high school, I was like never really good at anything. Um, and I wanted to be so bad. I did so many different sports and like I wanted to be a cheerleader and I remember like being at cheer practice and I fucking was terrible. It was brutal. But um, yeah, I was never really good at anything. And then I remember I really liked MySpace. Like I really fucked with my MySpace. And I wanted, and I, and I had one girlfriend that like would create cool videos with her other girlfriends and stuff. And I was like, dude, like I was a little surfer chick at the time. And I was like, I just want to like have a badass MySpace and like for people to come to my page and be like, oh, those are some interesting pictures or you yeah. know, whatever. And like have the music like correspond with the pictures or whatever. So I kind of just like geeked out on MySpace a bit and I used, um, I used some money that I got from my parents and I bought my camera. Everyone thought I was stupid for buying my camera and I was like, no, this is gonna be chill. And then I just started taking pictures. I think one of my first pictures was like a picture of like uh, the faucet and running water and I was like, oh, it's poetry, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's what was, how I started. What was the first camera you began with? Uh, Canon Rebel XTI and I used that camera for years for like so many professional gigs and like I would whip it out in like a fashion gig or something and you could tell people were like what the fuck is this girl's camera? That's really nice. You know it was, it was like an amateur yeah. camera you know and I was like well this is what I'm working with right now. I was like MacGyver like I'm just gonna make this shit work. Yeah, yeah. That, that's actually one of the first DSLRs I shot with as well. Oh nice yeah. and the Tamron lens that like comes with the kit too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, and it's like not that good of a camera but I was like yeah. dude I fuck with this camera. <laughs> yeah. What do you shoot with now? Uh, so I shoot with, I have a 5D and then I have a 5D Mark III and I usually shoot with my 50 lens, um, although like when I do events and stuff I shoot with, you know, wide angle lens and things like that. So a 5D Classic and a Mark II you said? Uh, Mark III. Mark III. Yeah, yeah, I love that thing. It's yeah. so rad. It's like, ugh, yeah, so much better, you know? Yeah. I stepped it up. I stepped up my game. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, do you, do you do like, 
do people pay you for your work? Do you yeah, where can yeah, people yeah. find so you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tomorrow I actually so I kind of shoot like a plethora of stuff like uh I'm not really like a niche photographer, although I might want to be one day, but I shoot everything, dude. So tomorrow I actually have two events. Um, I'm photographing two like big parties. And then, um, you know, I photographed like everything. Like I photographed raves, I photographed some editorial stuff. And then, yeah, like I, I just worked with a model. We did some boudoir stuff. So yeah, I get paid sometimes. <laughs> with this picture, what were, what were you going for? Uh, so that's a picture of my friend Naomi, who's a model. She's so dope. Shout out to Naomi. Um, for this picture, this was just kind of like, me and Naomi kind of geeked out on this together. She kind of came up with this. She showed me a picture on Instagram of these girls with like glitter all over their tits at a rave, you know? And yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I like that. And then I hit up my friend who's a makeup artist and I was like, dude, can you like make your own like version of this, like, like vibe? And then... I hit it with the pink backdrop because I wanted it to be like a little bit more whimsical and, yeah. you know, <clears throat> loud. I kind of like my work to be a little loud sometimes. And um, yeah, I just threw in front of that and I kind of got this like romantic, passionate vibe and all the glitter. So it kind of gave her like, even though it's like an editorial fashion picture, it kind of has like a whimsical kind of creative fantasy vibe. Yeah. yeah. Well, what would you call this, um, this style of photography? Like um, I definitely think it falls in like the editorial fashion and something you'd see in a magazine and maybe even like a beauty campaign or something. Um, I also kind of like, I'll mix that with like lifestyle and kind of throw in like a fantasy twist. So it's kind of like my own interpretation of like what an editorial fashion thing would be. Yeah. Um, I just try to throw like the Emily style on it. Yeah, yeah but that's tight. At least you see your, you know, your style like. Up yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Though, you know, that, that brings up more confidence and people are like, oh, I want to see that. You know, I'll be a part of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? No, I, I mean, I try to make my style kind of show through. And even if I'm working for a client and they want a certain look, I, I try to like, you know, give it that Emily twist and that Emily funk. So they'll like come back for more, you know, that's kind of what I'm about. Yeah, I was looking through some of them. There's like um, there's some crazy pictures in there. Actually. Yeah, I, 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 when I originally started photography, like I said, it was for my space. Right. So. When I originally started, it was all like my emotions and like what I was going through as a teenager and what all my angst was. And I really didn't have an outlet when I was a kid. Um, I grew up in a very strict household and uh, you know, like I, no one was an artist in my family. So photography was a huge conceptual thing for me to just like release all my fucking crazy emotions I had. And I think it always kind of stayed that way and it kind of shows through with my other photography. Like there's always like a little bit of a grunge or like a, like an edge to it, you know, and I think that's just like part of like my personality and why that shows that's good. Through. That's good because you know every you know art has to have emotion, so you're pouring everything into it, you know. Yeah, I really I like am. I'm, I am. I wear my heart on my sleeve, and I think it really shows in my you know my work and whatever yeah. I touch, kind of thing. Um, so I was gonna ask, um, have you ever had like weird requests while you know doing a photo shoot? You know, they're telling like, oh, can I do this? Yeah, I mean, I had, I definitely had some weird requests. Uh, I had, I don't know if I can say this. I'm sure. Oh, you can say whatever. No, I don't know if the client, I, I can't speak oh, of the okay, client. Okay, okay. Um, uh, no, I've just had some weird shit go down on set. But usually, um, you know, people are like pretty open to like go down with different ideas and things. And uh, I think like. I don't even know what the weirdest thing would be. I think I'm the weirdest thing on the set, you know? Like, I'm always, like, trying to be like, hey, can you put antlers on? Or, like, hey, can you, like, run around? Like, my, I think my brain is the weird one on set, you yeah, know? That's, that's good, though. Like, like I said, you know, there's a lot of emotion and imagination going into it. Like, yeah. I saw one picture, I think it was uh, one of your modeling pictures, where you're a deer? Oh, yeah, a fawn girl. So I'm really, I'm, like, super obsessed with fawn girl. She's one of my characters, and... Uh, she lives in this like alternate universe, which it's modern day society, but like she's totally just like this subhuman fawn and she uh, goes through life. She's kind of like me in like a different world, I guess. And she goes through life and she feels things and I kind of can express a little bit more of like my sexuality and like, um, you know, just the different feelings I have through fawn girl. I mean, I do it anyways, but like, she's just another creative little like Narnia outlet for me to get a little weird with. Jesus. You, yeah. Did you ever used to read like a, a bunch of fa fantasy books and like yeah, animorphous dude, stuff? Yeah, like dude, I, that? so I have my modeling account. So my modeling Instagram is Narnia and Blood. So I 
get down with fantasy. And I just saw Blade Runner too. Blade Runner was so sick. Nice. I love I love that like fantasy otherworldly vibe. I think it's like really like a healthy escape for, you know, all the bullshit we go through in life yeah. and I, I love it. Like I'm I'm kind of like if you know me at all, <laughs> I like say Narnia so much it's kind of annoying. But yeah, dude. I like I get down with Aslan and Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones and I love dragons and shit. So that is like a heavy influence on my art, I think. That is so awesome. I I, I used to be really into uh, animorphs. Oh yeah, when you flip Ooh. through the book and it's like brrr, yes, it all changes. Man. Dude, I just used to like flipping through the books and being like, what is this gonna change and do? Jesus. I, I got so into it in, in like uh, middle school that I was like stuck inside the library every day. Yeah. You know, just chilling in there. Ditch class if I have to, but I like reading them, you know? Yeah, dude. I stayed home. Uh, when I was in uh, like freshman sophomore year, I stayed home and like read Twilight. I was so in I was a Twitard, I admit it. But yeah, I like stayed home and watched like read Twilight in the bathtub for like three days. <laughs> it was That's weirdo. pretty awesome. I, I used to watch <laughs> it in high school. I mean, it's a really good story and series. You know, it's kind of it like uh, Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry Potter was dope. I kind of got like I felt I wasn't allowed to read Harry Potter when I was a kid. There was a lot of books and things I wasn't allowed to read, so I didn't really get on the Harry Potter train until after I graduated. But yeah, Harry Potter was pretty cool. I got into it enough to like, you know, make my dad like, oh, you know, you want the set? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like that. You're like, yes. Indulged in it, man. Dude, right? I was That's how I was it. with Lord of the Rings. Like, I dressed up as an elf and I went to the premiere with my brother, who was an orc, and we were the first in line, and it was so tight. Like, remember, I made like this Renaissance costume and I had like elf ears and everything. It was pretty tight. But yeah, I was like the same with Lord of the Rings. Lord Good, of the committed Rings. to the geek, man. That's tight. Dude, yeah. <laughs> that's so awesome. What's uh, what's uh, going on here? You know, like. Uh, so that's one of my new models. Her name's Nicole. Um, she's actually never modeled before. Before she modeled with me, and uh, so I saw her. I get my hair done by this guy in Newport who does really fun little alternative styles. Um, so he was one of the clients, and or she was one of her his clients. So she was all tatted down and like has pink hair and I was like, dude, I could photograph her. So like a lot of times I'll even photograph people who aren't models um, and then I'll kind of direct them and like create a story with them. So for this one, I was kind of just going for like a boudoir, sexy, alternative, like really showcasing her beauty kind of thing. Yeah. All right. We'll take a good look. <laughs> I mean, I mean, she's got so an amazing body and she's got amazing tattoos. No, I mean, it's a, it's a good photograph. Things I kind of and then like again it has like that kind of like little whimsical vibe to it with the coloring and and this was with the 5D with the 50. Yeah, that was with the 5D and the 50. Uh, uh -huh. I think I had a little bit of flash on that one. Yeah, but what do you edit on? Uh, so primarily I go through Lightroom and okay. then like so I'll pick all my pictures out through Lightroom and I'll star them or whatever you you know. Lightroom swag and then um, I'll go and I'll go in Photoshop and like yeah. really fine tune it. Yeah, there's another one in Nicole. Oh wow, this yeah. one, this one gives me really, really bad Marilyn Manson vibes. Yeah, you know, some people like really compare my stuff to like grungy kind of stuff. Yeah. Like um, I definitely think yeah, that could be like a cover of like a hardcore definitely. CD. Um, I yeah, totally, or like some like grunge pop kind of thing, or I don't know. Yeah. So so what's the next step with all this? I see that you're uh, aiming towards tattooed women to. Uh, you getting people to do their hair, to do their makeup. So what's after this? Um, there's kind of a lot going on. Like yeah. I, um, I collaborate with a lot of different artists continually. And, you know, I'm collaborating with fashion artists. I'm collaborating with uh, stylists. Um, but for my own art, like, I just want to create these characters and have more depth to my characters. Like, I, I have those two right now, but I want to create, you know, a couple more. And I would love to do another art gallery. I had an art gallery at the beginning of this year. And um, it was great, but I think so I'm like... where was the art gallery at? It was at the... Um, it was in Santa Ana at that big... Oh, okay. Oh, crap. What is it called? I forget. <laughs> yeah, the Yost. It was at the Yost in Santa yes. Ana. Yeah. So that was an amazing venue. I mean, like, I couldn't have asked for more. And I kind of had my own, like, self-portrait thing I was going oh, through yeah. right then. So, but now I've been working with so many models and... I'm kind of in a different phase and chapter in my life that I would love to do something maybe even like glow in the dark or like a lot of my pictures have a lot of color and like if you yeah. look under black light at my pictures, it kind of brings out a different color in them. So I would kind of like to do like maybe an art gallery with like some weird lighting or something. That would be tight. So like, do you prefer, to pr do you prefer um, photography or modeling more? 
Um, I like both. So sometimes I like really just need to geek out and like release some energy modeling. But so when I originally started photography, I was doing like a lot of self portraiture work because again, like I kind of had this really strict childhood and I, it was my only way to kind of release. And um, so I did that for years. So I was kind of like modeling self portrait for a really long time. Uh, one of my favorite photographers, Francesca Woodman, she did a lot of similar stuff to that and she really influenced me. And um, I was really dark for a really long, long time. So I think modeling just kind of went hand in hand with my photography and like being able to use that as like an emotional outlet a lot of times. That's really, is she your only um, influence or is there more? No, definitely. There's so many more. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, like classical, like more, I don't know, Anna Leibovitz, I mean, obviously she's amazing. She she worked for Rolling Stone, now she works for Vogue, and she does all these amazing editorial shoots, and the tonality in her pictures are just like butter, like, oh, they're gorgeous. And then Gregory Crudson is amazing. He does like these um, amazing, I love his work because it looks like a still from a movie, but he, it's all for one picture. It's not for a movie, it's not for anything. So he'll do all these lightings around this city and like have this car that's on fire and this person that's over here and it's just for one shot, one image. And then you kind of have to create your own narrative. So Gregory Crutzen is like an amazing artist. And then, you know, I have people that are uh, more modern. Like I have my one friend, I have a couple friends that influenced me too. My one friend, Zim, Zim Kilgore, he's always been amazing to me. I always thought his work was really good. He does really clean imagery. Um, yeah, it, it's super creative. So there's so many people and I get really influenced by my friends too. I love seeing like what my friends are doing. And that's really tight when you yeah. have like a, a, a surrounding um, community. A, yeah, yeah, pretty much your own community, you know? Yeah. That's so tight. That's like, yeah, I try to I try to like use all the positive energy I get from people and like just put it into my art, you know. You ever uh, think about collabing with them? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I collab often. <laughs> like, I maybe should slow down on the collabs because I need to make some money here. But um, no, I collab a lot. Like, uh, I just collabed with the homie Joe Anvil. We just did something together, and we have stuff in the future working together with his paintings and his T-shirt line and stuff. So. We have some stuff coming up, and then, um, yeah, I collabed with a tattoo shop the other day. Um, yeah, just random stuff, you know? That's dope. That's yeah. really dope. Yeah, I collab a lot. And I'm collabing on, like, this shoot. I'm going to photograph this really cool, like, glorified go-kart car, and it was so fucking fun to ride in Jesus. with a model. And, yeah, it's going to be tight. Yeah, I'm excited. I got to stump you now, but... Okay, shit. I got to ask you a question, a really nice question. Yeah, I'm ready. So how would you compare your photography style to an animal to what to an animal an anime an animal an animal yeah i was like oh fuck you got me with the anime question an animal okay so my photography style with an animal would be like like a fox with two tails but like maybe that is like looks like a cat but can transform into like a hawk <laughs> yeah, and more shit. It's pretty elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> like, like she's like a fox with two tail cat on the ground, and then like she can just like <laughs> hawk out and like fly up to the sky and like eat shit and birds and. What makes you want to combine those? I don't know. I just can't pick one animal. I'm too like too much for that. Too over the top. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a transformer. I can't. I just can't pick one. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and it depends on the day, too. I could be a wolf deer the next day, you know? I never know. It's always different. Yeah, it's always unexpected. I, I, I relate to animals a lot, though. I like their spirit and their vibe and, like, what they do and, like, how territorial they are and things yeah. like that and, like, how badass they are and how they just kill shit and, like, eat and kill. It's awesome. If that's the case, <laughs> what's, what's your favorite animal if you had to choose one? Oh, it's so hard. I have, I have some animal tattoos, but um, – I think it would be like a mix, because I go back and forth. I, I have lots of personalities. So I think between like a wolf and a deer. A I really animal. relate to wolves and deers a lot. Yeah. Why a deer? A deer, uh, I can be really soft-spoken. I know that's weird, but oh, I can't okay. be. <laughs> and I can be really like tender-hearted and sensitive and, you know, just kind of quiet in my own regard and oh, emotional. Yeah. And then like a wolf, like just like hustling and like, getting what I want and like going for the gold, you know, like they're just gonna, they're gonna get their prey, you know, and in the sense like I'm gonna, I'm gonna make photography happen. So would you say that those two animals make who you are or would you want to tap into 
yeah, who I the think, wolf is. No, I think I think uh, I like those two. I like the combination of those two. It's like a yin yeah. and yang, you know, like a uh, one without the other. Yeah, yeah. I like I like the combo of them. I don't think yeah. I'd want to pull them apart, you know. Yeah. Have Have you only Have you only ever shot digital? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've shot some Polaroids, which I love Polaroids, but it's just so expensive, you yeah. know, like. Dude, a pack of Polaroids like twenty five dollars yeah. or like what, like fifteen? I don't know. I might be off on my numbers there, but um, uh, no, I would love to shoot film more. It's just I haven't like really experimented with it, you know. So I've kind of been in the digital world for yeah. most of it, and then Polaroid too. Yeah, I would take Polaroid pictures while I was hiking, and then I like that's like what I give as gifts. I don't know. I'm weird. <laughs> Yeah, because I definitely think, because I, what you mentioned earlier with the, that photographer who had like a burning car and a person on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that reminds me a lot of like very cinematic I think cinematic he might even shoot it in like a digital medium format or like a oh, medium okay, film. Because yeah. I know he uses like those, you know, the medium format cameras and everything. And he actually doesn't even take the picture. He just like stands by it and has someone else click it. Oh, okay. Because he's like so nervous about it every time. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, film would be awesome. I'd love to like dabble into film more. That would be rad. Would there be any other formats of uh, photography that you would try out? Mm, I definitely would like to see some of my stuff on shirts. That would be cool. Um, okay. And like large format. Like I would love to see like my shit like printed huge oh, yeah. on a building or something or like, you know, working with a clothing line or something where it's like just printed large. I, I actually just got a picture printed um, on a billboard for a tattoo artist on the freeway. And I'm excited. I have to go on the 605 to go find that. So, yeah, I got to go find it. <laughs> But I want to see it printed big, you know? Like, yeah. that's how I see my pictures printed big. So I would love to see that. But we'll get there. <laughs> so I was curious to ask, what do you have to say for new photographers, new models who are out there who might be afraid of this new thing that might be oversaturated? Yeah, it definitely is oversaturated. And it's, it, you know what? It's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. And don't go to the industry because you want to make money. Go to the industry because you love it. You know, if you're in the industry to make money, like you're in the wrong industry. Like you got to be in this industry, for me at least, is because you love it. You know, but I mean, everyone's different. Um, I would just say, like, fuck what people say and just, like, do you, you know? Like, if your friends or family or anyone, like, puts you down and you're having a hard time and, you know, like, it's taking um, a while to get to the point where you want to be, just keep persevering, you know? Every time you fail, you learn something. And I failed a lot and I've learned a lot. So just keep fucking doing it and just keep persevering, you know? That's awesome. That's really awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Dope. So like, so. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> All right. So say so you could travel back in time. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. would you tell yourself in the past, well, from the future, you know? Dude, I was a little insecure girl for a really long time. Like, I was a doormat, and I just wish I could go back and just be like, dude, fuck what you people say. Like, stop caring so much about what people think, because just do you and, like, be creative. And I had a really hard time trying to embrace my creativity, and I had a really hard time um, just embracing who I was as a woman and as an artist and as a person. Yeah. And I wish I could just go back to, like, the little girl who kind of was all over the place and just be like, dude, it's cool. You can be all over the place. You're 19, you're 18, you're allowed to be all over the place and it's gonna be cool, you know? Not be so hard on myself, I'm very hard on myself. So yeah, if I could go back, I would definitely be like, like way chiller with myself, you know? Be out there, you know, do your thing. Like. Yeah, yeah, be like softer with my own heart, you know? That's dope. Cause I'm softer with everyone else, it's just my own. I like try to kick my own ass, it's annoying. <laughs> I feel like every artist is like yeah, that. Yeah, every artist is like that, right? We're our own like worst enemies. Just insecurity, you know, but like it, it grows over time. You know? Yeah, yeah. And then like going back to like the failing thing, like if you keep failing, like eventually you're going to succeed and eventually you're going to like something you're doing, you know. Well, we're actually going to be taking a short break. Cool, cool. Thank you, Emily, for the insightful comments on photography, on modeling, on pretty much everything that's made you want to explore this field. Yeah, thanks for letting me be here, guys. Yeah, so we're going to take a little break. Uh, maybe get some water, maybe, you know, calm the thoughts a bit, and yeah. Cool. We'll be back after this break. We'll be talking about her photography, her modeling, and, well, pictures and stuff, you know, samples. Something told it was over, 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 over,
Getting ready with her model. Right now, Julian's doing a Julian. Yeah, come on. Da -na -na. <laughs> Yay, it's Mia. Hi, Mia. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, I was just telling them how we met at the Pancake House. <laughs> yeah, it was chill. And then actually, um, should I keep going? Yeah, yeah, okay. go for it. So actually, wait, we're waiting. Oh, my bad. Oh, is it after the music place? Got it. We have like a commercial right now. Mia. Is it your friend Joe? We're good. We're good. We're back. All right, we're back. We're back with uh, Emily and her model or and, and friend Mia. Yeah. Mia, friend and model. Hi. 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 Would you like to introduce yourself a little? She's so cute. Hi. Talk to the camera. You know, you're good. Uh, who are you? You know. Uh, my name's Mia Padilla, and uh, I'm just I'm a model, and I um, I'm just modeling with Emily. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. She's actually blowing up right now. She's doing like a lot of fashion and editorial work. So, yeah, she's blowing up. What's your Instagram? Uh, my Instagram is Mama Mia um, with a dot between the I and the A. You should check out her stuff. Her stuff is legit. I photographed her once, and then I was like, oh, sorry. She's all blown up. It was sick. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, do you want to get into a little bit of your photography then? Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could totally. Uh, just against the green screen, or what do you think? Uh, yeah. Yeah, OK, cool. Or the picture's up there. Yeah. OK, the picture's up there. Uh, that picture actually was for um, kind of like a beauty and hair magazine. Um, Melissa, uh, hair studio in Huntington Beach. I was collabing with her. Um, I was collabing with uh, the model Naomi Whitley, Whitley, 
and then Kelly Sean did um, the makeup for that shoot. So yeah, uh, and also um, uh, Dan Richards was the designer. So um, Dan Richards' designs are so fucking rad. Like he does a lot of silicone, like um, Game of Thronesy vibey designs like medieval and uh you know dragon warlord kind of thing Jesus. and so we wanted something really cool that would fit um melissa actually had um this uh article available in this hair and makeup magazine it's kind of i'm kind of losing the title right now but um so we wanted to do something kind of fantasy and you know that's totally up my alley but still very strong so we kind of came up with this imagery of like a girl warrior princess kind of vibe these gold flakes which are very whimsical fantasy and then her hair if you like see other pictures it's like kind of like a crazy fro and so it's awesome. very it's very uh you know just just otherworldly and fantasy and i think we kind of totally achieved that look and i'm, I'm really proud of that image yeah, yeah. what i'm really liking is, is like how much imagination is put into like oh like your photography you know like i'm pretty sure there's others like that probably do the same or not but i don't know about it yeah so this is new to me this is like really like uh dude dive right in get get crazy get weird but i know my friend here is a photographer too but you know it's like i'm seeing other people uh, talk about their experiences and their like uh preferences and perspectives of uh, their own art in photography yeah it's uh pretty interesting you know it's just like Mind blowing. Yeah, no, it's so fun. I mean, everyone has like a different mindset. I think that's why I like collabing so much. I mean, this was a huge collaborate. Like, even though it's published, I mean, we are all collabing makeup, hair, model, designer. I mean, we all collab to make this one image possible. And without all those little pogs, you know, it wouldn't have worked. This is her, though, right? Who? That's her? The girl sitting No, this thing? is not oh, Mia. Oh, okay. This isn't Mia, no. <laughs> I was That's like, wow, Mia. they look similar. Mia's taken some incredible images with me. Uh, I don't know if we got any of those up on the screen today, but yeah, I've taken some really fun. We d we did like a fairy shoot out in the wilderness, and I bought these like really f like fancyful wings, <laughs> and I I basically just told her to like go get weird out on some rocks in a nice. stream, and she did. It was awesome. That's I have, like a little promo music video of us doing that. Yeah, the first real shoot I ever did was with her. Yeah. Oh and wow. Yeah, and she killed it. She killed it. Yeah. She you said you you said you met at the pancake house yeah so i waitress too <laughs> yeah i waitress too so i have like three different jobs it's crazy but um so i waitress and i slang some pancakes in the morning i'm a little okay. breakfast diva <laughs> and uh, i just saw her this gym sitting with her mom and having breakfast and i was like dude i'm gonna go see if she wants a model she looks like a great model and then she actually like ended up being a model so it was oh, wow. really amazing actually yeah I owe it all to her seriously she like gave me so much confidence it was awesome because that's all I needed was that little like push uh -huh. I always wanted to model but she like totally pushed me and now I'm like doing good so Aww. so what Thank you. <laughs> so it gave you that push mm -hmm. like what what made what made her push you I mean what there are what qualities that have in her made like push me like she's just so like just like welcoming and like just like honest and like like the first thing she told me to do she was like when you go home like just put on some music and like dance in front of your mirror and like sure. that's what i did and like it just made me comfortable wow. and like she just has a great way of working with people she's awesome you're welcome thanks man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um who inspires you oh my gosh so many people a big inspiration is actually um she's an illustrator chiara batista um, I don't think she sells any of her art. She makes these like really creative little fanciful stories and they're, they're one illustration at a time. But again, she like creates her own world and her own character. She has like an octopus girl. She has a fawn girl too. Um, and uh, I would love to cosplay as her fawn girl. It's so tight. But she creates these little images and like you have to like dive into the world of that image and it's yeah. the story is within that image. And then she'll create other stories of other images and she has like this bunny that's in love with the sky who's the sky is a wolf and it comes down and like wraps around her. It's really amazing and beautiful. It's like very visual poetry. So I look up Ch Chiara Batista all the time. I'm wow. pretty obsessed with her. Yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful image because a lot of people, they can't directly associate who inspires them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's that's very empowering in the case of uh, being able to know what you as a person are looking for. Yeah, yeah. And I think, too, like, just, you know, like, 
like life experiences expire me and like what I've been through, like I've had a lot of life, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm sure everyone else has too, but like yeah. mixing like my creative outlet and like what I like to geek out on, like the sci-fi movies and fantasy and what makes me happy, you know? But then taking things about my own life and like, you know, the fucked up shit that you go through and kind of combining it with your art is kind of what I go for a lot of times. Yeah, too. sure. Yeah. So, so with that being said, how do you feel about photographers who buy a $800 camera and consider You know, more power to them. I'm one of those people that like, if you have the knowledge, share the knowledge because not everyone's gonna do it. You know, and not everyone's gonna see the same way you see and not everyone's gonna be on the same plane you are. So like, you know what, if you have a shitload of money and you can go buy a 3K camera, go fucking do it. Go, you know, like, how do you, how do, you feel do it. How do you feel about the different, differentiation between a person who takes photos on his phone to a person who uses that yeah. thousand dollar camera but but the rather the question i wanted to ask was not that they had the money to buy a camera but they bought the camera for reasons wrong reasons like as in to get popular or yeah, to yeah. find girls things like that i mean if you have the money again like i never had the money and so i kind of was a macgyver and like made my way into yeah. you know more expensive gear but if you have the money, I mean, you're gonna do what you wanna do. I mean, everyone, like, you might burn out after a while if you're not passionate about it, you know? Yeah. Like, you have all this fancy equipment. Okay, that's nice. Well, where's your drive? Where's your determination? Yeah, exactly. Where's your creativity? But more kudos to you. If that's what you wanna fuck with, go fuck with it. You know? All right. Yeah, I'm kind of open. I'm just like, yeah, do your thing. Yeah. Yeah, just do your thing, man. And you know what? The people who are the passionate and the driven ones and the ones that wanna do it are gonna be the ones after, like, the cream is settled, you know? And yeah. they're going to be the ones on top. All right, all right. Yeah. So do you only shoot portraits? Uh, no, I no. I mean, tomorrow I'm shooting two events, so I kind of shoot everything. I'm like a jack-of-all-trades with photography, but mostly people events. I do weddings. I do fashion. I do editorial, but, but like with people in it. I don't do really landscape or anything. Oh, all yeah. right. Yeah. Have you ever dabbled in street photography? Um, a little bit. I mean... Not that much. I did, uh, I photographed some raves for a while and like that All is right. street photography as I get because before the rave I would like go up to different people in line and be like, hey dude, let me photograph you, you know, so, you know, I kind of did that a bit, but not really like just rogue street photography. Not as much. Yeah. All right. So the next question is for her actually. Yeah, yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> what made you, what made you connected to modeling? Like what? What drove you to want pictures of yourself taken? You know, um, I've always like been really comfortable in front of a camera like my whole life. Um, my mom is like, when I was little, was just a picture mom, like taking pictures of literally everything. So I just, I always just liked doing that. And I love creating like art with people, like, like with Emily, especially cause her like imagination is so like, it just runs wild. And like, she has you do like, it's like really playing a character and like, it's really fun. Like, and seeing the finished product is like so satisfying. I just love like the whole process of it. Of course. Mm -hmm. Um, would you say that you would like to interact with more photographers like her where they let their imagination run free. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. It it totally changes the um, the whole vibe of the setting whenever you like are working with somebody who has a really crazy imagination. You have any um, photographers you really want to work with besides your friends? Um, I like one of my ultimate dreams would be like to work with Petra Collins. I love her work so much. I love how like um, it's very dreamy and like. I don't know, it just has a, like a vintage vibe to it, which I also like. So I would love to work with her one day. That's good, that's good. Mm -hmm. So um, we're gonna jump in to uh, what you guys are gonna do, your live session, cool. you know, photography, uh, you know, your modeling. So um, let's get to it. On the couch or on the green screen? On the green screen, go ahead. He just wants us to talk while they're doing their thing. Yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> so what are your settings right now?
Yeah. ISO 400 Yeah, yeah So right now she's playing with the green screen trying to get some different effects uh, She's at she's at ISO 400 at 1.4 She's kind of dealing with the low light right now, but she's handling it. You can move one of the, one of the lights. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, you go for it. I'll just... I mean, you guys could go ahead and do what you want. Yeah, it's just whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Remember, it has wheels, guys. <laughs> All right, that looks great. So right now this is with the 5D Mark III. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so right now she's using the 5D Mark III. Just taking what she can with the lighting she has. She has a flash, but Yeah. Yeah, I've done it before in uh in Lightroom. You could Turn the greens into yellows, into blues. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I got a question. Do you guys, like, teach them poses or, like, they learn them themselves? Or? that don't model necessarily um, so I do love posing but I love working with a model who knows how to pose because then it's like we're dancing and it's like we're creating art opposed to me just posing them so it's more so, choreographed right? yeah 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 so yeah. they're doing their thing I'm doing my thing and then creatively we get to a little bit of a pinnacle Just like yeah, it's, it's the it's the subtle transaction between looking up, looking to your side, moving the dress a bit. It all seems to be based on nearly natural instinct. So I don't know if you guys can see, but right now she's using, she's shooting in portrait mode. She's not shooting in landscape. She's getting her full body, or about half and up. Not really getting the close up. So right now she changed her point of focus to about where her eyes are. So usually in photography, that's where you want to be, around the eyes, around the face, just where it's most natural. 
I usually see a lot of people just focus where they want to and that's that's really lazy <laughs> and it's when you when you go in and do manual control when you when you really focus on what you want that's when you get the photo that you originally intended people get to see what uh, you see you know exactly yeah so right now she just repositioned her hand there you go. Boots are super fun because they're kind of popping up against the red. So like whenever I'm doing a shoot too, I always have a model bring like a lot of different clothing and I kind of have to be like the, you know, informal stylist too. So yeah, mix and match and kind of color block things. And yeah, luckily Mia has like a lot of cool clothing. So we always get cool stuff. So as you can see, it's only been about five, ten minutes, and she's already gotten a, a lot of good photos. I usually see hour sessions where people get 50, 100 photos, but I'm sure she could get a lot more than that. Pretty and that's sure. that's usually how a, a real professional works their magic, and especially when it's a professional photographer and a professional model just doing their thing. What I love is like all the shots are coming out pretty nice. Like, even though like it's not like the best lighting and setting. And yeah, exactly. It's like she doesn't need much at all. She just needs the model. Yeah. So that's the kind of relationship you want when you're a photographer, you want to communicate. You don't want to assume that the model knows how to position or mm -hmm. assume the type of photo you want. You always want to experiment with different clothes, different poses, whatever it may be, and explore the different types of photos you may get. As I said, it's the fragile movements. I don't know if you saw that, but she just lifted her chin slightly for a different kind of photo. So always go for things like that, whether you're a model or a photographer. What I just saw right now was like directing her eyesight, you know, movement of eyes, or to get different, um, well, what is she looking at? But like, you know, her focus is some, yeah, you know, her focus is somewhere else instead of the camera, you know? It gives it more like a, what type of vibe is that? Okay, since you're a photographer, what um, what's going on here? Obviously, repositioning the type of shot she wants, because.